गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन दिस इज मनाली राज वेलकम टू द सी एस ए रिले न्यूज बुलेटिन प्रेजेंटेड बाई चाणा के आई एस अकेडमी पटना इन दिस सेगमेंट वी डेमोन्स्ट्रेट अबाउट द रियली इंपॉर्टेंट हाईलाइट फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ अर सिविल सर्विस एग्जामिनेशन लेट अस हैव अ ब्रीफ ओवरव्यू ऑफ टूडेज हेडलाइंस फोर्टीन स्टेट येट टू ज्वाइन दी एडुकेशन स्कीम अनवायबल अरुणाचल हाइडल प्रोजेक्ट गिवन टू सेंट्रल पी एस यूज यलागिरी हट शेल्टर्स टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ हिल ट्राइव हिस्ट्री RBI selects McKinsey and Company Accenture Solutions to use artificial intelligence machine learning to improve regulatory provisions. Today's synoptic report: Metagenome sequencing technology is transforming pathogen surveillance. Moving into the details of the news, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and West Bengal are among the 14 states and UTs which are yet to sign a crucial memorandum of understanding with the Union Education Ministry, which mandates the implementation of the National Education Policy of 2020. to get funds of almost 13000 crore for the next 3 years under the center's flagship scheme for state run higher educational institutions officials have raised concerns about the mou given that the 40% of the pradhan mantri uchchatar shiksha abhiyan pm usha budget must be borne by the states themselves and no extra funds have been earmarked for national education policy reforms the center says it is holding discussions to iron out the differences with the dissenting states and communicate the importance of national education policy and the pm usha scheme the 12 hydropower projects in arunachal pradesh that were officially handed over to the three central public sector undertakings are economically unviable private companies had given up on these projects with a total installed capacity of 11523 megawatts which would require at least 142000 crore to be executed by the central psus The Satlaj Jal Vidyut Nigam and the Northeast Electric Power Corporation Limited have been awarded five of these long stall projects each with a total installed capacity of 5097 megawatt and 2626 megawatt respectively. According to the agreement the National Hydroelectric Power Corporation NHPC would handle the two projects of 3800 megawatt. The government's push for hydropower as it would contribute to the objective of net zero carbon emission by 2017 besides the employment opportunities the development of these projects will help achieve the declared nationally determined contribution target of the india's non fossil fuel energy capacity to reach 500 gigawatts by 2030 arunachal pradesh's power commissioner signed the agreements with the heads of the three cpsus on behalf of the state government in itanagar in the presence of power and new and renewable energy minister In 2008 the Arunachal Pradesh government came out with a hydropower policy that entailed a payment of upfront money per megawatt for projects to be set by private and public sector firms. The government was then headed by Dorji Khandu, the father of the incumbent chief minister. During the Khandu senior's tenures, the state government signed a total of 223 memorandum of understanding with 159 private and public companies for projects with power generation capacities of 47000 megawatt. More than 2 centuries ago over 200 Malayali tribes people built traditional clay huts on the flat peak of the picturesque Yelagiri hill in what is now northern Tamil Nadu establishing an all encompassing system for shelter storage farming and cattle rearing all that remains of that settlement today is a single antiquated hut juxtaposed with new concrete houses a standing testament to the tribe's evolution from a foraging to a more modern lifestyle The Malayali tribe Malay meaning hill and yali meaning people is spread across Tamil Nadu's hilly regions. The tribe's people were foragers who settled in the upper Nilavur region of Yelagiri and began cultivating its table top peak for food. Initially living in makeshift huts they found a permanent solution in the red loam clay abundant in the hills and constructed simple one room structures. The Reserve Bank has selected global consultancy firms McKinsey and Company India LLP and Accenture Solutions Private Limited India to develop systems using artificial intelligence and machine learning for its supervisory functions. The RBI is looking to extensively use advanced analytics, artificial intelligence and machine learning to analyze its huge database and improve regulatory supervision over banks and NBFCs. For this purpose the central bank plans to hire external experts. While the RBI is already using AI and machine learning In supervisory processes it now intends to upscale it to ensure that the benefits of advanced analytics can accrue to the department of supervision in the central bank 
the Department of Supervision has been developing and using linear and a few machine learning models for supervisory examinations. The interest now is to explore the data to identify its attribute that can be leveraged to generate new and improved supervisory inputs. The supervisory jurisdiction of the RBI extends over banks, urban cooperative banks, NBFCs, payment banks, small finance banks, local area banks, credit information companies and select all Indian financial institutions. It undertakes supervision of these entities with the objective of accessing the financial soundness, solvency, asset quality, governance framework, liquidity and operational viability to protect the depositors' interest and financial stability. In 2022, the world witnessed a global monkeypox virus outbreaks. It was attributed to a super spreader event and threatened at the planet with another epidemic, but which fizzled out. One reason is that scientists were able to apply genome sequencing technologies perfected during the COVID-19 pandemic to understanding the origin and spread of the mpox virus. The worldwide deployment of large-scale genome sequencing infrastructure during the COVID-19 pandemic is now holding us in a good stead by allowing us to conduct avian influenza genomic surveillance source. For example, the scientists working at the Institute Pasteur du Cambodge, the Cambodia, demonstrated earlier this year the power of such surveillance when they successfully decoded the full genome sequence of the Cambodian H5N1 virus under 24 hours. Since genome surveillance provides the sort of information that experts can use to devise an early response strategy, identify emerging viral strains and undertake risk-based surveillance of key animal species, genome technologies are likely to become mainstays of our arsenal against pathogens of the future. Government schemes in news. Web Browser Development Challenge The Indian Web Browser Development Challenge was spearheaded by METI, CCA and CTAC Bangalore. Indian Web Browser Development Challenge is an open challenge for technology enthusiasts, innovators and developers to create an indigenous web browser. More than 200 participants from government departments, industry, startups and academia through online and offline modes took part in the challenge. The winners of the challenge gets Rs 1 crore as cash prize. The winner would also be supported further to take the developed browser to the next level. National Media Campaign Union Minister Giriraj Singh launched the National Media Campaign of the Department of Land Resources. The main objective of the campaign is to spread awareness about the computerization of land records and the digitization of the cadastral maps. This campaign has been launched for common people to make them aware about the new initiatives in the land governance and watershed development component of the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sicha Yojana. National Generic Document Registration System, WDC PM Krishi Sicha Yojana and Cactus Project have been included in the first phase of the campaign. The government had launched Digital India Land Records Modernization Program in 2016. Some text in news. 142 lakh tons is the import of edible oil into India during 2021-2022 fiscal year. The domestic production of edible oil is insufficient to meet the demand and the shortfall, which is around 55% and is met through imports. 18,070 films certified by the CVFC in 2022-2023. Due to COVID-19, film certification had dipped to 8,299 films in 2020-2021 from an average of 20,000, according to the Information and Broadcasting Ministry. That was all for today. Aspirants can avail the PDF of today's news from the description link of this video. Stay tuned to our channel for standardizing your civil services preparations. Thank you.